Coming back to you a little bit before the uh, second half begins of WKU versus Saginaw Valley. Uh, gentlemen, your impressions from the game so far? You can take takeaways from Saginaw Valley or WKU's play. Alex, we'll start with you. Uh, I've actually I've been really impressed with Saginaw. I mean, I'm not surprised with how they're playing, but the communication, the teamwork, um, I've been very impressed with them. Western, again, they've made a couple of what I would call rookie mistakes, and uh, I know the captain just had a pretty long talk with them about it, so we'll see if they can remedy any of those. Ben? You know, we just watched the Grand Valley game not too long ago. I'm more impressed with Saginaw Valley, frankly, than I am I would agree. With, with Grand Valley. Just because Grand Valley played a really rookie team. What, only played twice this year? Twice this season, yeah. And, um, and did not look like they were handling it nearly as well as Saginaw is handling WKU this time. Yeah, we'll see, but I have been very impressed. I haven't seen Saginaw play this year, so very impressed with them thus far. And I think they will definitely be in the mix um, on Sunday. We'll have to see how they hold up against a little stiffer competition. Again, we all love WKU being alumni of the program, but they just were not as strong this season coming into this tournament 2-17. and 17. Yeah. Not, not as strong is a very generous way to play. Well, I, you know, I, I got a soft spot, soft spot in my heart for the Hilltoppers, so I always try to dress it up a little bit. What confuses me about that, 2-17, and 17, it sounds awful, but the thing is, frankly, ooh, they got two catches. Wow. Two Look catches at that. That was phenomenal. That was absolutely outstanding. That was unbelievable. have to take this momentum swing right here, right now. Look, look, look at how long it's taking them. Look at how far back they are on that right-hand side. That was such a slow retaliation. Do you have a timeout here? Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on. Shot clock violation? Saginaw Valley is yelling at each other, by the way. I'm, I'm seeing some curse words flying at their own uh, teammates off to the side. Oh so. gosh, there was a shot clock violation. How? There was like... Has there even been 15 seconds in this first point? This is, that's just bizarre. So Ben, you were saying about playing uh, two and seventeen coming into this tournament. So two, what 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 confuses me about that is as soon as you play a few times, you no longer you should no longer be scared of the ball. Like realistically, you gotta go. Okay, it hurts for a second, and you're done. And if you want to keep playing after I don't know four or five games, you generally lose that fear that I'm seeing WKU have right now. I don't know if it's because they're playing a different opponent and they're playing Saginaw Valley and they're playing someone from Michigan, and all of those factors are scary. But after 19 games, I would have thought the WKU would have been like, hey, we figured our stuff out, and we can manage this team if we play our game. And so far, they're not. So that confuses me that they're still this scary. Well, they've definitely played uh, some elite competition, Central Michigan, Grand Valley, Michigan State. They've played all the top schools. So I think what you may be seeing is a little bit of youth on this Nationals roster that isn't quite used to that, uh, that level of play. And a comment from Jeff Sorrell, coming from Jeff Sorrells saying, tell, those, tell them boys to attack. Yeah, they've, <laughs> Jeff is noticing what we've noticed, that WKU is being very passive, and we've distinguished already the difference between being defensive and being passive. I think we're doing a, we're doing a ball count here. Ball count. Ball Everyone ball. hold your balls up. You know, Alex made a really good point uh, at the half uh, to an audience member here. Um, he was saying that there's a major advantage for WKU this half because of the nets that are in the back that stop the balls from ricocheting back. On the other on the other side, where Saginaw Valley is right now, the balls ricochet off the wall and have a very high likelihood of going back to WKU if they're throwing hard enough and they uh, and they ricochet. So, it's interesting to me that Saginaw Valley, as the higher seed, would choose to have the wall during the second half. If I had that choice, I would think you would want the nets at your back for the second half in case the game came down to you know, uh, a close point or something like that. You'd want that advantage in your favor. I guess it's like the, uh, it's like the sun in football or something like that. Like if you have an open field football stadium, it's very similar to that. The, the, the first side that you have does matter. Um, and so, yeah, this, is, this, this should be much more in favor of WKU this time. To be perfectly honest, I have no idea what just occurred on the court. A lot of discussion amongst the officials and the team captains, but apparently we're back at it now. Well, I think we had a little confusion about the number of balls, and there's just been a lot of, of discussion happening. I'm not quite sure what's going on here. But, yeah, what's really frustrating to see is what we talked about already, which is a lot of WKU throws at blockers. 
which I have been preaching from day one, makes zero sense. Why waste your arm and a throw on a blocker who is very, very likely going to block your throw? And another one. You only have so many throws in your arm for this weekend, so you got to make every one of them count. And throwing at a blocking opponent is just asinine to the nth degree. Now this, how do you explain these slow counterattacks from Western? Watch when they get the advantage, which they currently have the ball advantage, but they're sitting on the back of the line. I think you see um, perhaps a lack of practicing that. You see maybe a lack of experience. Because what you see with a team like Grand Valley, where the counters are crisp and immediate and organized, is hours and hours and hours of practice and years and years, decades of experience when you combine all that together for their players. And so it's just they don't have the time in both practice and overall game experience that a team like Grand Valley or Saginaw Valley does to make those counterattacks as crisp and as immediate as they should be. So we have ball advantage, that's great. But they're walking up and they're throwing one, one ball at a time and they're not coordinating who they're throwing at. If, let's say Big Bird, who is a seasoned player, how many years has he been playing, five, five years? Something like that. Yeah. Big Bird needs to walk up, he needs to have a ball right at his mouth, calling out a number on Saginaw's team or a person on Saginaw's team to throw at. And yeah, team he's catch. not doing it, he's not doing it, nor is our captain WKU captain doing that either. They need to be coordinating who they're throwing at every single time they walk up to that line. Yeah, you're not, you're not seeing a lot of group throws, which like you said, takes coordination. And I do wonder if some of the younger members of this roster just don't have that kind of mindset yet to where you team up and counterattack quickly. And so many throws happening from behind the free throw line, which is completely inexcusable. You talk about not even getting up to half court. If you're throwing from that far back, you're not, nothing good is going to happen from a throw like that. Honestly, I think it's more on the leadership than anything else to, do, to make that happen. I mean, WAU's captain could be pulling people up right now. He could be gathering the number eight, number 32, all into this corner up at the, up at the throwing line, and it's not happening. So they throw away another ball because of shot clock. A good catch there by Hunter Dickinson. Brings back in uh, number 77, Zach Kelsey. Now at this point, Western has their entire roster in. They have the ball advantage, but we're still seeing this passive play. Mm. And see, what's really frustrating about that, too, is you're down 3-0. You have got to score points and score them quickly. And that's what I've, I've talked with the captain, Nick Johnson, before, and I said, you know, in their first about, I think, 10 or 11 or 12 games, they scored, like, Eight points. I said, congratulations, you've lost three of those games right off the top because you, hadn't, you didn't score a point in some of those games. And so you just have to score points to win games. And right now the toppers are playing not to lose this point, and they're going to end up losing this point as a result. Well, I mean, Saginaw wants to play this game now. They want to run out the clock. So the longer that they make these points go, clearly the better the game is going to be for Saginaw Valley. So yeah, They're playing right into the, you know, Saginaw's hands by going slow and being very passive. Because that's exactly what Sag Valley wants at this point. They want to save their arms. They want to milk the clock, nurse this lead. And WKU has got to be pushing their advantage. They're down 3-0. That's a nearly insurmountable lead unless you are extremely aggressive in a second half. And we go now to another WKU alumni, Andrew the Survivor Swanson. Swanee, what are you seeing out of the toppers so far this game? Um, catches are fantastic, really, especially that second point. Uh, this point, I think they've had three catches. But what it's coming down to is executing in the late part of the point. They were up five, six, seven people that second point and did not execute. And Saginaw did. It's not that we played to, you know, it's not that we got caught. It's not that they came back that way. They executed. And I think that's really what it's come down to. They're not playing bad. I think they're actually playing really, really well. And if they continue this, hopefully they can keep their heads up and roll this into tomorrow and make, make a good run tomorrow. But you have to 
uh, think that at some point, this passive style of play, you have to score three points in this second half to be able to tie the game up. And playing this with this defensive mindset does not help them right now. Yes, I agree. In this situation, you're down three points. They scored that third point, or Saginaw scored that third point in four or five minutes. So you have to play at that pace in order to make this competitive, and they're not. So you got to think of where your mindset's at. Are they trying to win this game, or are they thinking ahead? You would think with their style of play that they're, that they're thinking ahead, but who knows? Who knows? Well, thank you very much, Swanee. Enjoy the rest of the game. It was good Thanks. talking to you, buddy. Yep. All right, back in the booth now with my two compatriots. Uh, I want to comment on that. Uh, he's right. WKU is not playing bad. They're playing strategically wrong. Yeah. And it's not that it's bad. It's just not going to win them games here at a national level. That's all there is to it. And maybe, like Swanee said, their goal is not necessarily to win this game, but uh, just to uh, perfect their style of play or work on their style of play and get ready for their next two matchups, which they will actually be the favorite. And at least one of those, and you could argue in both of those. So maybe they're ironing out some kinks right now, seeing what works, what doesn't work. I'm not sure, but you have to think there's some kind of strategy involved in what, in what WKU has been doing so far this game. And we are closing in on about 21 minutes left in the second half. I think there's more Saginaw Valley people up than there are WKU up at any given counterattack or attack. I mean, that was another throw from half court, and that's why he got out. Yeah. Or not even half court, at the free throw line. I think if you're WKU at this point, you at least have to try to score a point in this game to get your confidence up, even if you don't think it's feasible to try to score three against a team of Saginaw Valley's caliber. You have to at least get a point and boost your confidence here going into your next game. I'm, I'm nervous that it's not going to happen. I'm, I'm seeing uh, some WKU players trying to go for some catches right now, and they're easy catches, and they're just, they're just dropping them. And, I mean, Saginaw is chipping away at what was a massive, massive lead for WKU. WKU had all their players in yeah. at one point. Yeah. And now there's, there's what, uh, three, six, there's nine. And, that's, and now it's nine versus uh, seven. And that is not a big lead at all, especially against a team like Saginaw. Yeah, they've just been slowly chipping away. And that's what these Michigan teams do so well. They don't panic. Even if they get down to the man advantage, they keep chipping away and chipping away, and before you know it, your man advantage is gone. Yeah, and that's the thing, though, is Saginaw Valley is deep. They have players that they know, even if their best player gets out, they've got seven more. And so Saginaw Valley is, is not worried because of that factor. WKU, I don't think, has that same, that same depth at all. There, we have evened up. Yeah. There's no longer a man advantage, but there was a catch. Let's go, and that catch break brings back in Josh Wynn, one of their best players. Really got to see that Josh has step up here. Number eight, number 44 for WKU. Have to play well to close out this point and give WKU any chance of winning this game. Swanee making the comment that this strategy from WKU would work at the beginning of the game, but now with this kind of deficit, WKU is digging their grave with each passing second that they are not the aggressor. Good dodge there by number 32, Hunter Dickinson. We can see Saginaw Valley's names as well this time. Yeah, <laughs> so we can just say Gaskins going in. Yeah. Hoffman with the kill, something. It's a little difficult. Six, eight, eight to six now, I believe, Western's advantage. So let's see, they've, they've got to close out this point. 
if for no other reason than a little bit of build up, building up a little bit of self-respect. Um, looks to me like a second all player might have thrown out his arm because he was clutching that. Uh, Peyton, Patton. Yeah, Patton is like, he's he was hurting. Yeah, he's hurting bad. That, that's not a fun thing to throw out your arm on the first game of, of, Grand, of Nationals. Got a timeout. It looks like he's... Uh, Patton is uh, taking off his jersey. It uh, appears he may have injured his shoulder. Going over to the bench right now. So I think what they did was they subbed in a player off their bench for Patton because his shoulder was hurting so bad. Stoppage in play here as Saginaw Valley substitutes out their injured player. Just a, a shoulder... Little shoulder, like elbow. Oh yeah, elbow, elbow, elbow pain. Yeah, so elbow pain for Patton for Saginaw Valley. All right, looks like we're about to resume play here in the fourth point from WKU versus Saginaw Valley. The injured Saginaw player is testing his elbow on the bench right now. And with a man advantage in WKU's favor, and it looks like a split ball advantage 5-5. Saginaw Valley pushes up, no kills. Yep, it's like frozen molasses counterattack. Yeah, WKU doing a good job protecting their own players, but their throws are just not anywhere close right now. A nice catch there by Hunter Dickinson. It's Big Bird back in, too. Another one of their arms. That's a nice catch. What WKU has done really well since we've all graduated is they've become a much more of a catching team. And so that kind of strategy serves you very well at a two-day tournament where your arms will be absolutely shot the second day. So it's great that they are using catches to their advantage, but they're gonna have to start getting some outs because you can't rely on catches to take you all the way home. And a, a crazy swing there. That's, um, wow, three players out in a row for WKU. Just completely evaporates their man advantage and takes it down to, uh, looks like five players left in for WKU. And there goes Brent Schinkel, number 12, out on a hit to the foot. Oh, and a catch by Big Bird. Attempted catch there by Josh Wynn, takes him out. But Nick Johnson does come back in on the catch by Big Bird. And a very nice catch because I think it hit him right in the stomach, so it stunned him a little bit, but he was able to hold on to it. Now, the strategy of being very passive works right this second because you can't run yourself out because, I don't know, people in, at home don't really know how exhausting it can be to be the last couple players at, uh, in, the, in, the, in the point for one team. It is so exhausting. Oh, it is. So right now it is okay to be passive, but they lost their opportunity to be aggressive in the mid-game, and it's, it's now the reason why they had to play passive again. Yeah. Alex, what do you think as we come down the home stretch here? About 15 minutes left in this second half. That big swing for WKU where they lost three players really hurt them. I think this is the point where I think what Western's going to have to do is just eat another point loss. We've got to use the time we've got left. And uh, at this point, it would behoove Saginaw Valley to really drag it out, hunt them down one at a time. They just kind of try to get some more catches. That can still swing this game in WKU's favor. They have used that to their advantage. But there goes number 20, Everett Taylor, on a catch by 73 for Saginaw Valley.
takes it down to four to Hilltoppers left. And Big Bird goes out there on a gray shot to the head. So that leaves us with just Nick Johnson and 88. Aaron Hedges left in. Two very veteran players, but uh, not the greatest arms. Very, very good catchers, though. So we'll see if they can get themselves a catch here and bring some of their teammates back in. Swanee, you have something to say. What's going on? Yes. So from a leadership standpoint, what Western needs to do for the next few points is take away what they've done well this entire game. You can't look back at, oh, we didn't make kills this game. they got to move on to the next game in order to, to progress throughout what the tournament. What have they done well? Catches? Catches. Catches, communication, I feel like it's pretty good. But they got to look at the things they've done well and improve on the things they haven't, which is throwing, group throwing, and being, being assertive. Very good. Thank you, sir. Oh, and a great attempt to catch there by number 15. Does not work out. Mark here in the second half.